I know you guys are super excited to find out what is in the DNC platform. We got a lot of details yesterday after the meeting. And progressives, you are going to love it. Just kidding, it's terrible. <laughs> Holly Otterbein is putting up uh, some of the details here of, in particular, issues where progressives have, you know, really organized, have been trying to push the party to the left or actually accurately reflect what the base of the party truly wants. These aren't actually radical positions. So let's see where the platform committee ended up on a number of things. Okay, Medicare for all, no surprise, voted down overwhelmingly in spite of the fact that we are in the midst of a pandemic and millions of people have lost, lost their health insurance and Joe Biden claims to want health care for all. Never you mind about that. No Medicare for all. Legalizing marijuana. Okay, now this is an issue with super majority support among Democratic voters. And yet even that gets voted down. But wait, there's more. Various amendments on Israel, including conditioning aid, the language of occupation, and also taking explicit stand against settlements. That was struck down, so a very traditional sort of democratic foreign policy line being struck there. And also note movement in terms of defund the police. So a number of core issues here that progressives have really been organizing around. And we've been hearing all about Sagar, how Joe Biden's going to be the most progressive president in history since FDR, whatever. And there you go. Very little movement. I mean, none of this is a surprise, but it's also just the platform is so like it's so meaningless. See, that's the weird part. It's so no, meaningless ultimately yeah. that like you can't even give an inch on the freaking platform. You can only imagine when it comes to actually doing anything, how hard they're going to drop. The, the last time a platform mattered was like 1862 or something. <laughs> uh, 1860, right? Whenever it was like. The slavery question. That's the last <laughs> time that a platform was actually dramatically important to like a national election. You know, whenever the part, whenever the parties were like actually trying to decide what the platform was, and that was reflective of the nominee. Now it's like that has nothing to do with how people actually govern. So you're right, which is that if you're going to have a platform, shouldn't it at least be broadly representative of your base and not of the person who is leading the party? No, but that's, they've just decided absolutely not. I just think it's kind of crazy and. What I think is crazier, too, is Bernie Sanders is nowhere to be seen on this. His delegates are the ones who are pushing this fight on yeah. Medicare for All. Mm -hmm. His delegates were the ones who are pushing. Let's throw Zaid's tweet up there on the screen. Um, you can actually see from Zed, what Zed talks about there is how Bernie is still going to vote for that Democratic platform. And he's like, yeah, I still think Medicare for All is essential, but I'm going to vote for that. He's not joining in part with the activists who were part of his own campaign and who he allegedly stayed on the ballot in order to influence the platform committee with, as Zed points out, doesn't seem to have a lot of fight within, within, him, within him about these things. It's a really strange phenomenon, right? Because the whole reason he stayed in the race and stayed on the ballot as long as he did, was in order to influence the platform. And now the fight is here, and he's not doing anything. He's not anything. doing and not doing anything. Yeah. It really is it really is sad because not only, I mean, the platform, whatever, I don't right. really care. It's just another signifier of, like, the direction of the party under Joe Biden in spite of the rhetoric, whatever they're saying. The truth is they're going to tow the same, like, neoliberalist mm -hmm. outfit. This is no surprise to anyone. They're not going to bring any, but any personnel in who's going to threaten that consensus. Um, but it really is sad to see how sort of irrelevant Bernie has become in this moment where we really need people who are big thinkers about how to shift the dynamics of power within the economy, how to build a more just economy that's more equitable between the top and the rest. And his voice is just, you know, it's just incredibly muted right now. And I do think that in part there was like, I think he really did internalize this, like, it's your fault that yes, we have did. Donald Trump. And I think that has really defanged him, really muted his criticism. And so I just feel like, you're, you know, progressives are kind of in this limbo mode where there's nobody who's really serving as an effective galvanizing force to push for any real priorities here. And um the other piece of this, we were actually talking about this in the break, is, you know, Joe Biden is on track right now to win, like, a historic, Huge. ridiculous landslide. And, you know, like, it's through no, it, like, he didn't yeah, do anything no, to deserve no that. There, he, like, he, very, he didn't even really do anything to win the primary. And now he's not really doing anything and he's going to win the general is what it looks like now because Donald Trump is just such an oafish fool and has 
done such a terrible job in terms of the response. But you know what everyone's going to say. They didn't take the lesson from Hillary losing of like, maybe we should do something different from neoliberalism. But when Joe Biden wins, they're going to be like, right. see? Centrism and corporatism. This is the way. This is the way that you win landslide victories. This is obviously the path that you have to follow. So that part of it is very dispiriting as well and something that progressives are going to have to really push back against. Because the truth is, I mean, you can't ever know for sure a counterfactual. Whoever the Democratic nominee is right now would be winning handily, not because of anything that they were doing, really. But imagine if you had Donald Trump being terrible and you actually had a Democratic nominee who had something to say. Just imagine mm -hmm. what kind of a victory you could potentially win that. Yeah. yeah, I mean, like we said, we'll never know the counterfactual, but it's pretty... Hilarious. And then, of course, what caught our eyes, our friend of the show, Nina Turner, a comment oh, yeah. she made. Let's throw it up there <laughs> on the screen. She said, voting for Joe Biden is like eating, quote, half a mm. bowl of shit. This is the woman <laughs> after my own heart. Yeah. That's all I have to say I guess about let's, that. Let's just end. Let's let Nina's uh, comment speak for the end of the segment. We appreciate you all. We'll have more rising for you after this.